Let's let you take static artwork from tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, or Fireworks, then bring that static artwork into Flash Catalyst where you can add interactions without writing any code at all. On the other side, kind of the way we help solve the design develop workflow problem is that the project you're working on in Flash Catalyst is actually just a Flex project. So a Flex developer can take that exact same project, open it up in the next generation of Flex Builder, and start adding backend logic and connectivity to it. And as you add those interactions in Flash Catalyst, you're actually generating well-formed Flex MXML code. That's great. Okay, so, so can we see a demo? Absolutely. So what we're going to show you today is an ecotourism expedition finder that we built inside of Photoshop. So now we're going to take this static Photoshop comp and turn it into a real application by bringing it into Flash Catalyst. That's right. So you can see we have the comp here, and it's just a bunch of static artwork that we've designed in Photoshop. <laughs> And you can see here in the layers panel that it's uh, been well organized into different layer groups that um, we're going to bring in and make into interactive elements in Flash Catalyst. So I'm going to switch over to Flash Catalyst, and I'm going to take that exact same Photoshop PSD file, and I'm going to import it, choosing to accept the default uh, import options here. And Flash Catalyst integrates very, very tightly with the Creative Suite 4 tools. So what you're going to see is that Flash Catalyst will bring in the exact same folder and layer structure that we had in Photoshop, so the designer can work on the asset in the same way that they would work on it in Photoshop CS4. And actually, this looks like something the designer would be very comfortable. Exactly. That's the same consistent UI as all the other Creative Suite tools. Okay. So you can see here that the artwork looks the same as it did in Photoshop, and as Ryan said, we have the same layer structure here. So now what I'm going to do is I want to make it so that um, when the user clicks on this little tour finder mini-map, that a larger map slides in so that they can choose their eco-tour. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new page. Now pages in Catalyst are just the different places that the user can go in your design and your experience um, as they interact with it. So I'm going to just name the page, uh, the first page is main, and the second page is map. And what Catalyst makes it easy to do is build transitions between these pages. So on the map page, I'm going to go ahead and show um, this big map here. And then on the main page, on the first page, I don't actually want the map to show up right away. What I want to do is I want to start it off the screen to the right and then have it slide on with a nice smooth transition. So I'm going to start out by showing it here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that artwork and I'm going to drag it over to the right here off the artboard. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so now it looks the same as it did before. But now if we look in the Timelines panel, you can see that we've automatically created a default transition. So if I play it here, we get a nice smooth slide and fade effect automatically. Now I want to tweak that a little bit. I want to make it so that um, the move takes a little bit longer, so I can just grab this move effect, I can resize it to be one second instead of half a second, and now we have a nice smooth uh, slower. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so that's good. We set up the transition. Now I need to actually make it so the user can click on this mini-map to play that transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab that artwork here, and then I'm going to convert it into a button component. And components are just like interactive widgets with a set of built-in behaviors. Well, what's unique about Flash Catalyst is we can turn any piece of freeform artwork into a component. So the components you create here are going to look very unique to any other component development kit that you've seen. That's right. And so you can see here I'm just making a preform change between these two uh, states of the button, the upstate and the overstate, so that um, it's a little more transparent in the upstate. Uh, so we have a little interaction there. And now I can go ahead and just very simply say on click, play transition state, map. And so when the user clicks on that, uh, the map will play on. And we'll see that when we run the project later. So now I'm here back on the map, and I want to add a control here that makes it so that the user can zoom in on the map. And I have the artwork for that over here in Adobe Illustrator CS4. So you can see if we look in the layers panel in, CS, in uh, Illustrator here, that we just have vector artwork, gradient, standard vector artwork, nothing special in there. So n now there's a pretty complex process to import that into Flash Catalyst. It's actually very easy. Okay. All I have to do is say copy, switch it to Flash Catalyst, and say hey. And now we're importing that uh, content into um, Flash Catalyst. Perfect. Well, I think. Um, so now I'm going to just drag that artwork over here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and convert it now to a vertical scroll bar component. So again, it's very easy to take this freeform artwork that doesn't really look like a normal scroll bar and just say, hey, make it a scroll bar. So now I've done that, and now I have to do a little bit more work to tell Catalyst what's the portion of the artwork that the user can slide around. We call that the sum. So I'm going to go into the layers panel here and just quickly select it. It's got the gradient and a couple little arrows in it, and then I can just say, convert it to the sum. And then I can select the background artwork here, and I can say convert that to the track, which is the part that the sum slides around on. And if we dive into the sum now, you can see that um, the artwork all, uh, that we've created a button component out of it. It's just got four uh, states, mouse over state, and mouse down state. But we haven't changed any of them yet, so they all look like the original artwork. 
But now looking at the design, I don't really like the way that, it's, uh, that the sum of the scroll bar looks yellow against the blue of the map. I actually want it to be blue like the map is uh, when it comes up, and then when the user mouse is over it, it will turn yellow. So to do that, all I have to do is I right click on it and I say, edit in Adobe Illustrator CS4. So with the CS4 tools, we actually have a very tight round trip workflow where you can always go back and tweak your design in the CS4 tool. And And if you look here in the layers panel, you'll notice that it actually looks really different from that initial scroll bar artwork. That initial scroll bar artwork was just flat vectors, um, no structure. Here we actually have all the structure that Catalyst needs for that scroll bar, so I don't have to redo all the work of going back, adding the interaction, setting up the sun, and all that stuff. It will merge it back seamlessly, and we'll see how that works. So I'm just going to go ahead and, using the standard uh, gradient editing tools here in Illustrator, I'm going to... Uh, wow, you, you, you look good with all these stuff. Yeah, very well okay. trained. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so this one there. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab these two little uh, arrows, and I'm going to also turn those blue. So, type those in. Okay. And now I'm just going to save that out and switch back to Flash Catalyst and say, fix that change. It's that easy. And what makes this round trip possible is something called FXG. FXG is a graphics format that can be opened and saved by the CS4 tool. And it's also just a subset of MXML. But the beauty of FXG, as NJ showed you, is the fact that you can do your design changes in CS4 and maintain and preserve all the work that you did in Flash Catalyst. So you can iterate on the design and really maintain that kind of workflow throughout the Creative Suite tools and Flash Catalyst. Right? That's right. So you can see here, if I dive back into this scroll bar, that again, we've actually updated the thumb. So that the update is blue. All that gradient, that new gradient, has actually been merged into the code for the other uh, states so that it's um, an efficient uh, working scroll bar now. So um, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do one more thing, which I think is going to be a little bit more interesting interaction. I'm going to switch back to this main state, and I have this little feature tour widget here. I want to turn that into an interactive widget where the user clicks on this arrow to see a little mini map. So I'm going to select the artwork for that here. And uh, I also have some hidden artwork right now for the um, for the map that's going to be um, on the other side here. So let me select that. It's actually behind that other artwork. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this content and I'm going to convert it into a custom component. Now up until now, what we've been seeing are components like buttons and scroll bars, these built-in components that have their own built-in behavior. Um, but you can also create a custom component that has just the behavior that you want that's fully custom. So I'm going to double-click into that. And I'm going to start off by just showing um, the textual content here. And now I'm going to duplicate the state. So just like we had pages in the main application that said um, where the user could go in the application as they interact with it, individual components have states that say how the component looks as the user interacts with the component. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these so they're a little easier to keep track of. And then in the second state here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this text content and turn on uh, the map content here. So if I click back and forth, you can see that I have my state set up. And now again, if we look down in the timeline panel, you can see that we've uh, automatically created this default sort of simple cross state effect. But I want something a little more interesting. What we can actually do is we can take advantage of the new 3D effects that are in the Flash Player 10. So I can just add a 3D rotation effect very easily. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to add a 3D rotation to uh, the front content here. And then I'm going to add another one to the back here. And then um, using the timeline here, it's a very simplified uh, timeline model where I can just slide the effects around and resize them to make sure that they get sequenced and play exactly the same way that I want. And so I can just slide these shades around, slide the rotate, and now I have a 3D flipping widget. So that's looking good, and I'm just going to do one more thing here because I have to actually make the, um, this arrow applicable. So I'm going to select it here, and I'm going to say I convert it to a button just like we did before. On click, so I transition to that state. Okay, so now I think we're ready to run the design. So now I've done all this design work in Catalyst, and I can now save file, run project. And what we're doing here is under the hood, we're building a Swift, we're building a piece of Flash content, just like all the other tools um, in the uh, Flash platform do. And now it's popped up here in the browser. I can just click on the arrow, get a nice flip effect, and mouse over this tour finder. You can see the, the little opacity change there. You can click on it to get the slide on. I have the scroll bar, I can mouse over it, I can drag it up and down. So it looks like my slides are working pretty well. So that, that, that looks good, but now how are you going to actually get that to the developer? So what we're going to do now is, because we've, we've been working on a Flex project this entire time, and so we've created those components, those interactions, we're generating that well-formed Flex MXML code. 
So I can actually save this Flash Catalyst Flex project out as something called an FXP. An FXP is just a Flex project package which contains all the assets inside of my Flex project. And I can give this FXP file to a developer. The developer can then open this exact same project inside of the next generation of Flex Builder and start adding data or bringing in any logic that they need, that they need to on the, on the developer side. That's right, and they can work back and forth between Flex Builder and Catalyst because they're working on exactly the same project format. So you get this great workflow. And I think we're going to see that just a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's incredible. This, this I think, solves your problem. It can be you know, back and forth, the designers can be involved in building the application, back and forth. Um, here's the big question, though. This is pretty cool stuff. When's it going to be available? So for those of you that are feeling a little bit brave, we're going to, we're going to have DVDs of an early preview version of Flash Catalyst after the keynote. It's Mac only, and if you want to wait for something a little bit more full-featured and polished, we're going to be doing an early or a beta release on Labs sometime early in 2009, and that will include both Mac and Windows. Very good. Thank you, Adrian. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.